Hey, I just want to check something with you, if that's okay. I just want to make sure that you're not sounding like this. When, with one very small change, you could be sounding like this. And this could all be to do with the angle that the mouthpiece goes into your mouth when you play saxophone. So in today's free online saxophone lesson, I'm going to talk you through the pitfalls of having the wrong angle on your mouthpiece and what effect it could be having on your sound. Let's get into it. Hey, first of all, check out all these photos of awesome sax players with amazing sounds. What do you think all these photos have in common? The answer is the angle that the mouthpiece is going into these players' mouths. Now, if you tilt your head up, if you crane your neck up, you are gonna change the angle and all the geometry of how your mouth interacts with that reed. So, I've put together a little presentation so I can talk you through this and make sure that you're not making this massive mistake because I really want you to have that awesome big sound that you've always wanted. So, I'm gonna jump behind the screen, let's check this out. Here's what it looks like when your mouthpiece is going into your mouth at 90 degree angle to the front of your face, okay? So you can see that the, the sort of average um, level of the mouthpiece is here. It's 90 degrees to the average front of your face. Now that puts an equal amount of pressure on your teeth and your bottom lip. However, if we then alter the angle that the mouthpiece goes into your mouth, and the mouthpiece is going into your mouth at an upwards angle because of the way that that lever is, um, and the fulcrum is acting in your mouth, there's gonna be more pressure on your bottom lip than your top teeth. So you're gonna be squeezing the reed because the downward force of the angle of the neck of the saxophone is gonna create that, that pressure on your bottom lip. Now this is not a desirable situation for any saxophone player, okay? You do not want more pressure on your bottom lip, you want less pressure on your bottom lip to really open up your sound. So with that upwards angle, you get more lip pressure and less pressure on your teeth. Now it probably won't be as dramatic as the diagram that I've got there, but just to illustrate the point. Now, if we go the other way around, you can see that when the, uh, when the mouthpiece is kind of pointing at a downward angle into your mouth, uh, there's uh, more pressure on your teeth, which creates a looser lip, okay? That means that there's less lip pressure on the reed and a little bit more pressure on your teeth. Now, this is really gonna help open up your sound. And when you see a lot of really classic players with an awesome sound, this is what you'll notice, that they seem to just subtly be uh, nodding their head down or the angle of the mouthpiece is a little bit, you know, I guess you'd say up towards their nose <laughs> rather than away from their nose. Hey, just before we move on to the next part where I tell you how you can alter the angle of the mouthpiece going into your mouth, please go and check out the old Saxophone Success Masterclass. It's completely free, just fill in your email. There's a whole hour with me with loads of great nuggets which are really gonna move the needle on your playing instantly. So go and check out the Saxophone Success Masterclass and believe me, your playing could really take a big leap forward. Okay, let's get back to the screen share. And let's look at those two ways that you can alter the angle of the mouthpiece in your mouth. The first way that you can change the angle that the mouthpiece goes into your mouth is by moving the your saxophone. You can adjust uh, probably your neck strap. So um, if you move your neck strap up, that is, if you make your neck strap shorter, that is gonna make the angle steep into your mouth. And if you make your neck strap longer, you'll get a slightly more nodded head and you'll have less lip pressure on your saxophone. So there's another way of doing it, of course, and that is to move your head. So if you kind of nod, slightly nod your head down, you will create that angle and take the pressure off the, off the reed. And also, if you crane your head up, so you're shortening the back of your neck, you will create the opposite angle, which actually is gonna create more lip pressure on the reed. <laughs> there's another factor that comes into play here, and that is the tension in your neck. If you have a neutral head position, you should have a nice loose neck muscles going down here, because all these, all these muscles are super important for your sound. Now, if you very slightly nod your head, that's actually gonna take the pressure off these muscles. However, if you crane your head up, like this second picture, you're gonna stretch the muscles in your neck 
and you can create more strain in your sound. So if you're gonna do one of these things, you definitely wanna slightly, you know, keep your head slightly nodded down against the mouthpiece. You're gonna take the pressure off the reed. You're gonna um, allow your neck muscles to be more relaxed, which is gonna give you more flexibility in your vocal tract, and you'll be able to create that bigger sound. So like I did in the brief intro, here's a little demonstration of those two methods and the effect that it can have in your sound. Now, in actual practice, it might be a little combination of both these factors. You might be adjusting your neck strap a little bit, which gives you the space to nod your head down. So here is my neck strap shortened and my head craned back, and I'm just gonna play a G major scale. Now I'm going to lengthen my neck strap a bit and kind of keep my head in that slightly nodded down, like look, slightly looking down position, as you can see in the, as you can see in the second diagram here. And here's the effect that it has on the sound. <laughs> Hey, one thing you might have noticed between the, that comparison between the two different techniques, when you have the steep angle in your mouthpiece, you're gonna play a lot sharper than when you have that sort of head nod position. That's because you're squeezing the reed and that is gonna push the pitch up. It's also the reason why you're closing the tip opening, making the sound smaller and thinner. So when you lengthen your neck strap and get that slight nod going on, not extreme, but the, a bit of a nod, you open up the tip opening, but you're gonna play a lot looser, so the pitch is gonna be lower. To compensate, you're gonna to have to push your mouthpiece on a bit. So as you can hear, this makes a really big difference to the sound, so really consider checking this out, just that slight nodding position, and see if it makes a big difference to your sound. If it doesn't, then no harm, no foul, just go back to the way you were. So that's all we've got time for this week. I hope you enjoyed this. This one tip hopefully could really make a big difference to your sound. Like I mentioned earlier, go and check out the Saxophone Success Masterclass. As always, there's a whole bonus video inside my Inner Circle membership. Honestly, the Inner Circle is just so awesome. If you love saxophone, you're gonna love the Inner Circle and it's only the cost of like a couple of cups of coffee a week or something. It's super affordable, so go and check it out. You won't regret it. If you bought me a coffee, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. And if you think you're getting good value, you know what to do. Click the link a doodle do. Link a doodle do. Oh my god. Anyway, until next week, where I hopefully won't be saying such stupid things. Uh, practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. Take it easy, guys. Because you're biting on the reed, that's gonna put. put a so, as you can hear, that makes a really big difference to the sound. 